Yeah. Hello. Um, today I'm going to introduce you to the spin pumping effect or the theory of the spin pumping. And this is a fall project, the term project presentation for this semester. Um, yeah, first I'm going to give a small introduction to the ferromagnetic resonance and then about the theory, the main theory, the, the Landauer formula, uh, and then the, the real thing like about the spin pumping theory. Yeah, so ferromagnetic resonance, also called FMR, is an important method to characterize magnetic samples uh, because we get access to the magnetic property properties, for example, the, the magnetic energy or the damping factor, and we need the damping factor, for example, to calculate the G factor. Um, for measurement of the, the ferromagnetic resonance, a small magnetic microwave field interacts with the magnetization of the ferromagnetic layer. And yeah, if the magnetization is not in equilibrium anymore, if it's not constant, then the magnetization starts to preside around the effective mag magnetic field. Um, yeah, to say about that is like uh, the, the cosine is the maximum uh, of the precision is uh, the maximum if we have the, the if we have the external frequency from the microwave field is the same uh, as the resonance frequency of the magnetization. FMR is used to produce a spin current between a ferromagnetic layer and the non normal metal layer. And that's basically what we call spin pumping effect. And through the spin transport, the precession magnetization uh, reduces. So we can measure also the line widths of the resonance lines. And that's, yeah, that's uh, what experiments try to do. Um, there's two ways to measure the spin current. Either we do it directly with the line widths or indirectly if uh, we transform the spin current into a charge current. And that's what we call the spin hall effect. Yeah. Then about the main theory, um, yeah, the Landau formula, the scattering theory. Landau formula is uh, yeah, the emission of a spin current through a spin pumping can be described uh, analog to the parametric pumping of charges in a non-magnetic system. And mathematically, it's it is described by yeah, we describe the precision in a cross-section matrix. If we have a contact layers like the ferromagnetic layer and the normal layer, um, yeah, we have a transition surface of the FM and uh, NM, the ferromagnetic layer and the normal metal layer, and uh, this is the so-called like scattering region or, or a mesoscopic contact, and uh, the electric transport is described through this mesoscopic contact by the Landau formula. The important thing is like we need to have uh, the scattering matrix where we have the coefficients of reflectivity and transmission. And uh, yeah, the cross section matrix describes the electron transport properties that only go, go through certain channels in the transition area. And if we suppose that we have n transport uh, f n channels, then uh, S is an n two uh, uh, 2n cross 2n matrix with n cross n transmission and uh, reflection coefficients or probabilities. Um, yeah, if we look at the chemical potential of both reservoirs, because we have uh, the ferromagnetic reservoir and the normal metal reservoir, um, they are at the beginning, they are in equilibrium, and if we turn on an external voltage, then we have uh, it's not in the equilibrium anymore, so the chemical potentials move, and we have a current. And uh, through this potential difference, uh, yeah, this current is like described by the Landau formula, where G is uh, the conductivity, and then we have like the scattering matrix and the potential difference. And important to see here is 
that it's dependent on the transmission coefficients. Uh, we need that for the, the spin pumping. Yeah, and the spin pumping is based on the Landreau formula, but we parameterized uh, the spin polarization as well. And uh, yeah, important is the, the transmission coefficients. We have a transmission, the, the scattering from the scattering channel from N to N and uh, from the sigma dot to sigma state. So that means that we only have a current from the ferromagnetic layer to a normal magnetic, magnetic layer in the beginning if we have a potential difference, of course. Otherwise, we don't have a current. Um, yeah. Um, the scattering matrix is also parameterized in components of the magnetization. Uh, yeah, if you look at a double layer of a ferromagnetic and a normal metal layer without external voltage, there's no charge. Uh, if the magnetization is also time independent. If we start this process through uh, the FMR, then we measure the spin current. And this is described by the formula from Tsiakovniak. He describes the pumped in spin current with this formula. Um, yeah, but he made that one assumption uh, that is like wrong. We have to correct it later because uh, yeah, the, the, the assumption is like that the normal metal absorbs the total spin current and that the flux of the spin is orthogonal to the transition surface. But it's in, in, in the experiments, it's not like that. Um, yeah, now we can compare the formula to the Landau Lifshitz uh, equation. Um, and we see that AR is proportional to the damping term, to the first term in the Landau equation. Uh, and AI is uh, parallel to the precession and this where is it? this part will interact with the uh, with the gamma what is the gyromagnetic quotient by the experiment ar can be measured so the line width of, of the resonance lines if we measure the 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 experiment one time with a normal metal layer and one time with just the ferromagnetic layer and the other time without the normal metal layer and uh, ai can also be measured but the shift is like very very small so it's very hard to measure yeah ai and ar gives us uh, the spin pumping conductance and it is defined by the spin mixing conductance matrix uh, uh, not matrix, by the spin mixing conductance, uh, G. Mm -hmm. We can also this define a bigger G with that because uh, with the spin dependent transport theory, the spin conductance is analog to the electrical conductance and it's dependent on the eigenstates. Um, yeah, and what we see here is like G up and G down describe the, the spin conservation transport through the transmission area. And uh, the G total is like the total transfer of the spin momentum between the ferromagnetic layer and the normal metal layer. And uh, because of that, we can describe the big G with the small G because the spin current is just the transport of the spin momentum. Uh, now to the assumption that we made that is wrong is uh, that uh, to correct it is that the normal metal layer has a finite spin momentum. So what happens is that we have a spin flip process and the spin current will go back to the ferromagnetic layer, but it's a small effect and it, it is dependent on E. And in general, we can say when we have an, a higher E, uh, the spin current 
and the normal metal relax efficient, so there is no spin current back to the ferromagnetic layer. We need that to for, for the experiments and try to realize that the normal metal layers relax more efficient. And yeah, we can also define the spin diffusion lengths, lambda, um, in this formula where uh, Vf is the, the Fermi velocity. Yeah. And then we have to correct the, the spin mixing conductance. It's this, yeah, with uh, the two effects. So what we have is uh, this matrix. And for the current, we know by the theory that the real part of the equation is much bigger than the imaginary part, so it gets into this equation. Yeah. And if we the, the spin, yeah, we measure the line width, and we, we also get the, an additional damping term. What is uh, part of the, the, the Lando equation? And it's like just uh, we have to add it because we have a, an, uh, an undamping factor. Yeah, and here in this equation, S is like the surface area of the transition surface, and T is uh, the thickness of the ferromagnetic layer. Yeah, that was it. This is like my studies and the literature that I had.